go. Happy World Refugee Day. Is it wrong to say happy? It's not that happy, right? Happy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we're it's happy. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm talking with, now I, I want to say your name properly. So I'd like you to tell us who you are in uh, as brief, interesting way as possible. Go for it. Who are you? Okay, uh, I am Kulut Hadak. I am a journalist from Syria. I came to Canada as a refugee like um, uh, in 2020. Uh, I used to, I graduated from uh, Damascus University. Uh, I used to work as a journalist and then I left Syria, uh, escaped from the war um uh, to africa and stuck there then i came to canada and now i'm studying in canada starting my new life and launching my business right and your business is a bookstore uh which we'll talk about soon both english and arabic books which is uh, nothing like it really but before we get to that uh three dumb questions just to sort of know a bit about you um if you had somebody wrote you a check and gave you like 60 million dollars what would you do with it uh 60 million dollars okay <laughs> i will build new houses for uh, the refugees who live in camps and open lots of schools and the libraries <laughs> perfect perfect and uh what's something you're good at in life sorry what's something you're good at like i'm some people are good at dancing some people are good at cooking what are you good at okay um i think lots of things <laughs> because i used to do uh in general i have lots of um skills um okay i'm good of reading uh writing uh it's my job and also um, drawing, painting sometimes, and cooking. Okay, what's something you're bad at? Like bad? Uh, bad, uh, cleaning the house. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, we have that in common. Okay, uh, so I, there's lots of things to talk about, but one that's kind of fun if people are just tuning in. Um, it's, it's not your main point in life, but uh, you did have a kind of very interesting role in, in uh, Hassan Kantar. Uh, you know, that, that was a story that a lot of people heard about in the media and, and in part because of you. So tell us about that. How, what happened there? Okay. Um, uh, one day um, I saw a post about uh, Hassan's story and um, you, uh, a tag for me and you ask me if I can share the story with the friends uh, or um, um, in uh, Al Jazeera because I was working with them and then uh, I did a copy for the post and share it with lots of um, uh, journalists around the world uh, and share it with a group um, uh, uh, with a lot of um, uh, journalists, from professional journalists in uh, different uh, media platforms uh, around the world. And then the, st the, the story like um, was really interesting. So everybody start to send us messages. They want to meet, um, they want to meet um, uh, Hassan and talk to him and ask him uh, more about his story to put a spotlight about his situation. And his situation was like just a symbol of too many stories uh for refugees around the world yes and then then that start to um uh like to publish his story everywhere yeah it, it became a big story and he became famous as the man who at the airport the man who lived in the airport <laughs> yes there's exactly a, there's a, yeah and there's a book about it and and you're in it uh so how does it feel to have your name in a book like now you have a bookstore, uh, which you can tell people about. 
I'm thinking you could sell a book where you're kind of like a character in the book, so to speak. You're you're mentioned in this book. Now you're selling books. Is that kind of weird? <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> tell us about uh, tell us about the bookstore. Okay. Um. Uh. The bookstore is not actually only bookstore. It's um. Uh. Lately, I uh, launched my uh like um, media uh, company uh and um i launched what's it my called? uh what's house? it called if people want to if people want to find it what's it called okay is a star house for culture uh, house. it's yeah it's a bookstore and publishing house and uh blog uh, and uh, this blog uh, it will be um uh having uh lots of articles um uh talking about the literature uh the uh the uh, publishing um uh in in middle east and even around the world the translation the new books and uh for now uh, we are selling um uh, arabic books uh for um uh people who like to read in Arabic, uh, who live in Canada and USA. Uh, and we have um, uh, lots of kinds of, um, uh, and we have categories for the books uh, and for um, uh, too many ages, for adults and, um, and youth and uh, kids. And uh, soon we'll have English as well, English department. And in the future, we are planning to publish books and to translate our literature as Arabic literature and in introduce ourselves and our culture to the Canadian society and the opposite as well. Uh, because lately, um, uh, giant, uh, lots of people from um, uh, journalists and writers and readers uh, who they like really to keep them in touch and keep them, their family in touch with uh, the Arabic language and our culture, who likes to read in Arabic and who likes to publish their, their uh, books in Arabic. And I found that they really need um, a platform uh, like a star house uh, to help them uh to do uh, what they like to do uh to keep their self and um in touch with the arabic culture and introduce the uh the arabic culture and arabic literature for canadian right so it's interesting that you talk about that exchange because we've been hearing about that lately from uh, some of the people we've been talking to is is uh you know newcomers are generally supposed to learn all about Canadian culture. You have to do it even to get your citizenship uh, test. But then meanwhile, you have like, oh my gosh, like a very rich culture. It's a very, it's a culture that's been producing uh, stuff for thousands of, exactly. like much, <laughs> a really long time. And, and there's a lot of uh, richness there. So uh, the best is when it's a two-way exchange, right? Like yeah, everybody learns from each other. And, th and that sounds like, something that matters to you is this correct yeah yeah and um what why literature why why what you said you're a reader why why is literature important to you um um as an, an arabic literature uh, reader um literature is like um a really um it's like a mirror uh, it can show as um, uh, lots of uh, information and details about the society. So um, we really need, when we read a literature for any community, uh, we, it's, it's like open our eyes for um, this community, for their attitude, for their uh, traditionals for their their culture so in general uh, books give us a chance to uh, to know each other more yeah 
Uh, one thing I, I, I be, um, it would be a mistake not to mention is uh, private sponsorship. So this is sort of the context of a lot of the sharing that we're talking about. Uh, you happen to have a really big, amazing uh, sponsor group. Like it, it was beyond just the people who were on your paperwork, right? Like I remember when uh, you moved in, there was like this big group and uh, people just so excited to meet you. And, and, and a lot of those people, despite COVID, I mean, you've kept in touch with and, and you know, they're still in a part of your life, uh, even though you're past the one year. Um, how how has it been for you um, with you know interacting with Canadians and that kind of exchange you're talking about? What's been your experience? Um, okay, as you know, um, but I will retell the story. Um, uh, it's really <laughs> it's a big uh, experience. Um, as you know, um, I was uh, in. Um, in Africa, uh, in a bad situation, as uh, too many refugees around the world, uh, especially lately, um, the Syrian refugees, who they are suffering like um, everywhere of being um, uh, lost in their jobs, uh, their um, houses, their money, their companies, and, and just they escape and started a uh, new life everywhere. Uh, so I was in a um, really hard time uh, when I heard about the private sponsorship, uh, and uh, I was um, I was so lucky to have a refugee status from uh, UN and refugee board in Ghana. Uh, I had no idea it will be really helpful for me. And when I heard about that, there is a, bro a sponsorship program in Canada who can help me to, to get off my situation and just start a new life in Canada. That's opened my eyes really to start my journey of looking for someone who can give me his hand just to get out of that situation where I had been uh, disappointed, um, uh, depressed, uh, um, feeling lost, feeling now with um, uh, no future. Uh, um, everything was <laughs> really, uh, it's, it's hard. Uh, so I start to look everywhere and send lots of messages for organizations. And I was just living in one room. Sometimes I don't know uh, uh, what is just behind in the world. So um, I, I uh, sent lots of messages to ask for help. And then um, uh, one day I met someone through Facebook and he, uh, he really told me and encouraged me to, to, to keep looking. And he told me to don't be ashamed of being a refugee. It's my right to look for uh, another place for the um, uh, better life, uh, a better future for me and for my uh, family. Uh, the person named uh, Stephen Watt, and uh, the, <laughs> the journey <laughs> the journey starts from him, and uh, he um, he published my story, and lots of Canadians were really interested of my story, and really. Um, uh, start doing lots of things uh, to help me uh, to and to have me in Canada. And then that happened in uh, February 2020. Um, when I came to Canada, I can't until now describe my feelings after that hard time. I was really disappointed, <laughs> uh, so close to uh, to lose the, the hope uh, of changing my life. But finally, um, 
my, my, my dream came true and I arrived to Canada and I start my new life. Uh, when I came, uh, it was during the COVID. That's what made a little bit <laughs> my life was um, uh, a little bit hard. When I came, I have to know lots of uh, um, uh, like as I have to know the system. I have to know uh, discover the city. Um, but but it, it it was good it was good in general um uh, i found myself uh, from lonely person to person who is surrounded by uh, new friends new family um pressing the freedom uh starting to uh, uh, to do what i was want to do but i couldn't for a period of um the uh, asylum in uh, in Ghana, um, but finally happened. Yeah, it did happen, and I I want to say from my side that we're so happy you came, and you're such Thank a talented you. person, and your husband's a very talented artist and animator, and your children are uh, amazing, smart readers. Published one of them's a published writer already, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I'm kind of jealous of, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she's already beating me in, in the game of life. So, yeah, so we're really happy to have you and you've got more to come. You are in a, it's a journalism program, right? Television, broadcasting. Uh, yeah, so we're going to see a lot more of you. Thank you for being with us today. I love seeing you. I hope I can see you in person soon. I am doubly vaccinated, so. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. Okay. Thank you to having you. me. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. Bye.